Let's go! LSU football fans, there is a lot to get to because SEC Media Days kicked off today and LSU was actually the first team to go and obviously Ed Wardron had a lot to say, including something regarding what we talked about last week with our film study. So obviously, we'll get to that in a second, but we start with the commitment of Travante Citizen. He decided to make this announcement right when LSU was going through SEC Media Day. So, obviously, the timing was a little strange, but he does become the 15th commitment for the class of 2022. Top 150 running back, obviously a top 15 running back on top of that. He's really good. And, obviously, you see he's a top 10 player in the state of Louisiana as well. You know, one thing I find really fascinating about Trevante Citizen is last season he only had two games where he carried the football 10 times or more. So he was in a loaded backfield, and his senior tape is going to be really interesting as he becomes a lead running back. But outside of that, I consistently heard from people that are around these camps uh, that all these players go to that Travante Citizen is really impressive. So It's going to be interesting. I've looked at the film of the big three running backs in the state of Louisiana. That includes Le'Veon Moss, that includes Etienne, and that includes Citizen as well. And honestly, at first glance, I was most impressed with Citizen. Now, there are some rumors that he may or may not even play offense. He has got a perfect build to be an elite linebacker in the SEC. And obviously, he's got unbelievable ball skills and athleticism. So that is not out of the realm of possibility, seeing him play on the other side of the football. Le'Veon Moss could also still flip back to LSU. And then, of course, you still have Kendrick Law in this class. Is he a running back? Is he a wide receiver? Is he a safety? I don't know. I kind of view him as a running back as well. So, yeah, it's very nice to get Trevante Citizen. He is, to me, a take in this class for sure, even though I've tended to go against taking more than one running back in a cycle, especially considering you took two in this last cycle in Armani Goodwin and Corey Kiner, and in the cycle before that, uh, or I say that, uh, in the cycle before that, you brought in Cavantre Bradford. He's already transferred because John Emery and Ty Davis Price are still at LSU, and by the way, both of them still have three years of eligibility remaining. So I do think in the class of 2022, LSU needed to get one running back, but I'm not so sure if they needed to get more than one running back. So we'll see what happens. SEC Media Days were today. You're looking at some of the quotes uh, from the media regarding Ed Orgeron, and obviously uh, there's all different kinds of questions that are asked of you at SEC Media Days because there are reporters from all around the country that are attending this. And obviously Ed Orgeron was pressed about Title IX to the NIL, uh, to the starting quarterbacks, So, obviously, this is just kind of sort of a recap uh, regarding some of the major newsworthy highlights. Now, as many of you know, we do keep up with the news stories here at PHL, but to me, what's really interesting is Ed Orgeron said something that was very much discussed last week on this channel regarding his secondary, and He said that, uh, and and I really enjoyed this from Ed Orgeron, that the most important thing that they need to do defensively is stop the explosive plays. It's exactly what we talked about last week on this channel. And what we did on this channel last week in our past defense was we specifically showed you a coverage mistake LSU never changed last season and... Ed Orgeron acknowledged that he is going to step in whenever he sees something that he doesn't like. But something else he said, uh, there was a reporter out of Alabama that asked about Neil Farrell, and obviously Neil Farrell is from Alabama. Ed Orgeron said he is going to rotate his defensive line more frequently this season. And that is something else that we have talked a lot about on this channel, that LSU three down their defensive linemen way too much. And what I mean by that is, is you don't need your defensive linemen playing a high number of snaps. You want to keep them fresh, especially considering you brought in such a young and talented group. Ed Orgeron said this last defensive line class is by far his most important defensive line class and his best uh, defensive line class. So that is something else specifically defensively that Ed Orgeron said 
uh, is going to help out his defense next season. And Austin Deculus and, of course, Derek Stingley also spoke at today's press conference. Derek Stingley was asked about playing offense, and he said, well, uh, I will I will do it if Coach Orgeron asks me to do it. So we'll see what happens there. But overall, uh, a good showing at SEC Media Days from LSU. And here's a good thing about SEC Media Days, and the bad thing about SEC Media Days is that, well, nothing really happens. You know, we're still so far away to the season, yet we are still so close. Now, something else uh, before we get out of here. I thought this was really fascinating. Robbie Snelling, a four-star linebacker out of Nevada, committed to LSU, but not the football team, the baseball team. So here's a quote from Robbie via 247 after his baseball announcement. He says, right now, the plan for me is to be playing uh, football my senior year of high school, and we'll see how that shakes out. We talked a little to the football staff at LSU. I had to actually call them touch base with them and we had a good conversation but right now with how their linebacker room is setting up it'll be a watch and follow guy for them so it is interesting uh here that Robbie uh who's obviously a really good linebacker prospect actually had to reach out to LSU football themselves and Robbie actually has some SEC offers so I mean this guy is, is no slouch of a football player But he's really, 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 really good at baseball as well. And I went to his perfect game baseball profile. And once again, this is not an LSU baseball channel, but this is a football story. Uh, He throws, he's a left-handed pitcher, and he throws in the mid-90s coming out of high school. So if you were to ask me, hey, Carter, is Robbie going to actually play uh, for LSU football I think that's not the big question. I think an even bigger question is, will he even play LSU baseball? Because if you throw in your mid-90s and you're a left-handed pitcher, uh, you're probably going to get drafted pretty high and you'll never step foot on campus. And this wouldn't be the first time LSU had a dual threat baseball football. I just dropped my pen because I'm not smooth. This wouldn't be the first time LSU baseball had a dual threat football Baseball player never actually played for either. If you go back and look at Zach Lee, who remembers Zach Lee, the quarterback? Um, Yeah, I mean, if you throw mid-90s, you're going to probably be uh, a a high draft pick, and you'll probably take that money. So I think that's the more interesting question. As you guys know, LSU has already gotten a good start at linebacker with uh, DeMario Tolan already committing, but... Robbie Snelling looks to be a pretty good linebacker as well. So, I obviously, it is good if you're an LSU baseball fan. He did say um, that uh, he was close to committing to Coach Johnson, the new baseball coach, Jay Johnson, uh, before uh, he was close to committing to Arizona uh, before Jay Johnson went to LSU. So, obviously, that's really good for the LSU baseball team. But as far as football is concerned, I don't necessarily see myself seeing Robbie actually play uh, baseball or at baseball. I don't see him playing either, honestly. I think he will, he'll, he's going to go to the minor leagues and get drafted really early. Uh, but I, I, it would be hard for me to actually see him play football for LSU next season. Now, uh, I, I do want to share <laughs> this anecdote. Uh, it is interesting that this story breaks today because I was on 104.5 earlier. Shout out to Mario, my fellow KLSU alum. I appreciate you having me on your show. Um, it, it is very interesting. I was on the show today, and he asked me, what was my favorite memory at KLSU, which is uh, the student radio station where I got my start and where he got his start. And ironically, it wasn't with LSU football. It was covering uh, the College World Series for the full two weeks in Omaha, Nebraska. And that was LSU, of course, that was their last national championship. So what makes that really fascinating was on that championship team, the two best players, their best reliever was Chad Jones, and their best player, uh, the most outstanding player of the College World Series was Jared Mitchell. Now, obviously, they were loaded with LeMahieu and Matt Took and everyone else, Anthony Renato. Um, you know, we could talk about that. Uh, once again, I'm not an LSU baseball expert. I'm kind of a, that. That was the last team I covered really close. But anyway, uh, what made that team so great was that 
because Chad Jones and Jared Mitchell were on football scholarship, the 11.7 scholarship limit on baseball, which is very, very, very small and very, very, very unfair, they were able to use those scholarships on other players while at the same time get the likings and, and the help of two football players on their baseball team. So, and here's a fun thing. Obviously, Edwards Ron said a lot of stuff at SEC Media Day today. Obviously, there's quite a few uh, subjects. The main reason I focused on the defensive quotes is because that is uh, what we talked about last week, and that made me the most excited because the explosive plays and the lack of defensive line rotation was something that bothered me a lot, which is why you come to live streams. You would know that if you came to our live streams Tuesdays and Saturdays at 7 p.m. Central. And on Tuesday's live stream, we're actually going to go quote by quote everything Edwards Ron had to say. So we'll get deeper into detail. And ironically, I think the most important LSU quote from today was not from Ed Orgeron, but Dan Mullen. And we'll talk about that once again Tuesday night on a live stream. Thank goodness for the Trevante Citizen commitment. That made me happy. And uh, thank you, as always, for making this channel the most fun LSU channel on the web. It is Pow Hour LSU. Boom! I think we're doing uh, Lemon Pepper Chicken Wings tonight. Liz, 